So, hello everybody. Uh, I will talk about the card and especially uh, about the performance of the card and how we were able to improve it. So, first of all, uh, small things about me. My name is Wolfgang Kreminger. I consider myself a full stack developer and I work for C Rate 15 Online Handel GmbH. And because one job is not enough, uh, I also work as a teaching assistant for an online learning platform, which is called ZeroToMastery.io. Uh, I have two beautiful boys, a wonderful wife, and I'm basically finished with life planning, and now I'm full-time working on improving the card. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, this is just... Uh, schema of uh, how a customer journey might start with the card uh, and it starts of course with the customer the customer adds or removes the product from or to the card and if the customer adds the product the card object gets created otherwise the product will just get removed from the card so the next step oh jumped a bit over it so the next step is uh, as soon as the customer puts the product into the cart, uh, all processors get applied. So Shopper does the job to calculate everything which you need for the final cart. And then the cart persistor jumps into it and stores it to the cart. Before storing the cart object to the cart, uh, it has to get serialized, which means that the cart object is able to get stored into the database. Uh, otherwise, we will lose all the associations and data which we need for the card to be fully working. And then the save happens and it's finally stored into the database. So that one hurts. That one takes time. Especially if the card grows in size, so the customer puts more and more products into the card. Uh, that step will take longer and longer with each product because more data will go into their database. So why? One thing about it are the product associations. They are good and evil. So let's start with the evil part of it. Uh, all associations which you load via event subscribers, for example a product event subscriber, will go into your card and therefore also into the database. Custom fields of products, all of them, all which you load uh, or all which gets loaded via shopware will also go into your cart, so also get stored into the database. And of course, thumbnails. We all love them, we all need them, uh, especially all devices need uh, specific thumbnails so that you don't lo load too much data in into the devices. Uh, but they might not be as helpful as you might think. Uh, because you really load all of them, no matter which ones you need or not. And what are the good parts about the product associations? Of course, you have the control over the associations, so you decide which associations get loaded with your products. Uh, they are usable in the front end, uh, which will, of course, improve your entire user experience. You can load additional data, you can show the data in the card as you see fit. And the good news are cleaning up the card object before it gets stored to the database is pretty straightforward. We'll have a look at it in a few minutes. So the card data collection is also part of the whole process. The savior part of it is, of course, it's necessary for the shopper logic. You will need it because product data gets stored into it, promotion data gets stored into it, and also the shipping method data. So you all need this, all of them because uh, this build up the card and this will finally calculate everything uh, that your customer will get the final price of it. But it also contains the product data for each line item, which means each line item is just a product and therefore everything gets stored to it as well. So the thumbnails which we saw before uh, all of the additional product associations, so it gets stored a second time at least into the card data collection, which you might not need there. And the course part of it, it contains data which you might not read, as I already said, for each single product. Especially the custom fields, you usually have a lot of them. All thumbnails, 
Again, all thumbnail sizes, no matter what, if you need them or not. And for example, the entire description. I'm not sure how much of description you have in your off-canvas card, but usually you don't have the entire description which is shown on the product detail page. And of course, all loaded associations a second time. So why should you care about cleaning up the card? As I already mentioned, the database memory. With each card, so with each customer which arrives to your store, also the card object gets created and stored into the database, which means that the load on the database and the memory will increase with each customer and each card. Which then has a bad impact on the performance, because as we all know, uh, loading data from a fully blown up database might take longer as from an empty or a database which don't need to store as much data. During the shopping process, the add to cart uh, action takes longer for each product, so we can consider it a linear time. So as soon as you put one product into it, it might be okay, the second one okay, but the problem will start with the product number 15, for example, because you have all of the data, which I mentioned before, in your cart object. Making database backups will also take more time because your database uh, will be in, uh, more in size as it might should be needed. And of course, on the server side, serializing, which means writing the card object to the database, and deserializing, which means reading the card object from the database, will take also longer with more data. But we have one event where we can hook into it for cleaning up before the card object gets persisted. This one is from the shopper core, which is the card persister. And there, there is one specific method, the save method. This is the part where Shopware saves the card object into your database. And there we have one event, the card verify persist event, which gets dispatched soon or before Shopware uh, stores it to the database, so the card object, uh, the entire card. What we get from this event, it just is just a few methods of it. Of course, there is more. Uh, the context, the sales channel context, we can get the card and we get the information if the card object should get persisted or not. There are two methods which are interest, interesting enough and which we need. One is the get card and the other one is the should be persisted. Because, sure, this is just uh, injecting the service as a usual event subscriber in your services XML. And keep in mind, with great power, there's also great responsibilities. Because if you clean it up too heavy, or you c remove too much things, your card might be broken, which means removing all the thumbnails, there is no thumbnail in your off-canvas card. So take care of which data you might need and which you don't need. And of course, you can also test it out and just drop everything and put things back again which you will then need to be your off canvas working. So this is the event subscriber which I mentioned before. There we just hook in into the card verify persist event and inject a own cleanup card method where we check if the card should be persisted because there are of course ways or calls where a card wouldn't get uh, written to the database. Therefore, we check if it should be persisted or not. So if a database interaction is happening, and if, it not, if it's not the case, then we only return. Otherwise, we will start with the cleanup work. And all of the cleanup work starts with getting the entire card and reading through it uh, which data we can remove and shrink down the entire card object before it gets stored. So cleanup time. So what are the performance impacts now? Reduced data leads, of course, to faster serialization and deserialization, which makes sense because not as much data is in anymore, which we don't need. Faster response times of the servers, because the card object itself isn't that big anymore. We have less database load because, again, we have less data to store. 
and less storage is needed into the data in the database for each card object. So is there something left which we can do? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, of course we can. We can save an entire request because Shopware is built up a way that if you put a product into the cart, one request gets fired to add the product to the cart, and then a second request gets fired to open the off-canvas cart and load the data in there. So what would be the path of it? By default, Shopware redirects to the checkout off-canvas. In this checkout off-canvas, it will create an action response. So this is then basically the second, the second uh, request in the line item add route. In there, it uses the off-canvas card page loader. And this off-canvas card page loader method then uses the card service. And the card service has a get method, which will then load the entire card from the database again. So we thought, mm, isn't it possible to make it better? Yes, of course, because we already have the card object at the action line item add. So what we can do is just decorating the card line item controller. This means we have to override the entire add line items function, copy the entire function body of the original add line items, and instead of calling the create action response, which will then fire a second request, we will just uh, make sure we do it on a route or on a request uh, where we want to. In our case at zero eight fifteen, uh, we had to make sure that front end checkout card page creates a second request to reload the entire confirm page. Therefore, the check here. Otherwise, I call here a own card page loader, which we'll, we'll see in a second, uh, to just use the card which we already have in the add line items action. And then we just render the storefront as usual uh, to render the off-canvas card. So the custom page loader is just as simple as it is. It's basically simply boilerplate code. We just create a page object, and there we make sure it is an off-canvas card page to not break things. We set the card to the card which we passed before, which we already have, instead of fetching it again from the database. We set all the shipping methods, which are available, and then we have to make sure to dispatch the original off-canvas card page loaded event to not break the usual shopware event flow. And then we just return the page object. So this method, this get shipping method, is basically cloned from the original off-canvas card page loader. It's just a method which we need to make sure to only provide the information for the available shipping method. Otherwise, this little drop-down which you have in the off-canvas card where you can select shipping method will not work anymore. Therefore, we just reuse what Shopware already has. Because it's a private function, we have to copy it over to have it in our custom card page loader. And then we just have to inject everything, make the usual symphony decoration pattern, and decorating the original card line item controller. And of course, also injecting the card to page loader. So there were some performance improvements by Shopware uh, with the Redis card persister. Maybe. The performance might be better because there is still the step of serialization, deserialization to make sure that all the objects are working after they're stored or read from the Redis client. It doesn't solve the problem of a bloated card data object because it's still the same without the logic which I showed you. And you have, of course, think about your Redis setup. So working with just one Redis database is not enough in that case because a deployment might also drop all of the existing card cards which you currently have for your customers in production and therefore deleting the entire Redis or cleaning, clearing the Redis data store might also delete, also delete the cards from your current customers, which we don't need. So you have that to keep in mind if you use the Redis card persister. And of course, it also doesn't solve the unnecessary request which happened by adding a product to the card. 
And the good news are you can also use the code which I've, I've shown you with the Redis card persistor because it's just an abstraction and it, it's just another way of storing your card and not the card uh, itself. So it's just the place where the card gets stored. So what does Shopware think about it? So about the entire idea uh, to clean up the card object. Well, on May the 11th, we had the first Shopware meetup here in the Moonshiner headquarters. The Shopware participated themselves at the meetup as well. And ultimately, they made it a thing at the Hockathon. I'm not sure if you know what it is. It was the Hackathon from Shopware on the Hockenheimring on the 13th till 15th because of the talk they saw, which I gave there on the meetup. And I also got mentioned, and they made a pull request, and they figured out that the simple steps made an improvement by 30%, which is awesome. So it will land in Shopware, in the Shopware core soon. I'm not sure when, but it, I guess at least at 6.5. So it was a great thing. So this was the, the problem or solving the problem of a bloated card and how you can improve the performance. But we at 0 at 15 figured uh, that the entire uh, user journey from using the card and how what, what's happening after the customer is finished and did the checkout, we were not very happy with it. So the lifetime of a card object in Shopware by default, the customer enjoys in searching around about your, in, in your online shop. So he starts or she starts to shop around. The customer adds the product to the card. The customer proceeds through the checkout and the customer finalizes the checkout with the payment process and hits the finish button. So all good, right? Kind of. We figured out another thing. If something went wrong while finalizing the order, so the payment get canceled or it simply just don't work, the card gets deleted. So the customer isn't finished yet, but the card gets deleted because something happened with the payment, for example. But the card is not available for the customer anymore. I speak here for guest customers. They don't have an account. And if you have also said that guest customers get logged out automatically after they have finalized the uh, order, then the customer has no chance to come back to his order or she's order or her order. The customer might not be satisfied because it because of it. The card is gone and it looks like the customer has to start from scratch to find all the products and put them back into the card again. Of course, there is the account order edit page, but the customer has to find it. It's not that easy because there is a hash, and you need that hash in order to be able to access it. But again, if you're a guest customer and get logged out automatically, then you have the issue that this page isn't accessible anymore for you because you don't have the session anymore. And in the end, it's like a dead end because the customer was not able to make the final pur purchase and you might lose this conversion this time. Is still all good? No, we have proven it. So what is the expected lifetime of a card? In case something went wrong, the card should not get dropped. The customer should have the ability to change the card till the, he'll, till the order is finally finished, which also means the customer can start the payment process, but might think at that step, um, I just want to buy another thing and hit the back button. And sh the customer should be able to put products into it or to remove products from the cart at that time. And it should always be possible to jump back and forth between the payment and the cart till you finally decide it Okay, I'm finished, I will now do the final checkout. So there is one possible solution, which we came up with. At the point where Shopper drops the card, so the card to order conversion, we add the card back into the database and to the data store again. 
we added a modify card button to the account order edit page in case just the payment went wrong and the customer just wants to change the payment method. But the customer is also able to hit the button and come right back to the checkout confirm directly. We store the current order ID in the user session on the finalize or order button click to make sure to have it. We check if an order is already stored in the user session. If that is the case, which means the customer tries it a second time, we delete the old order ID first. So we cancel the old order to not lose uh, the relation of the customer journey. And if the customer reaches the final order page, we finally drop the card from the data store because at that time the customer will don't not need the card anymore and then we can safely assume that we can delete it. So that's it. Nothing more to do. So how can that look like? We add the card token to the session because we always have access to the session and we save the card again. We store the current card token in the checkout confirm page loaded event. Because the card token might change or there might something else happen. Therefore, this is the best place because this is the place where the customer starts to finalize the order. It's just making a subscriber and setting the session variable, whatever you want to call it, to the current card token. Then we decorate and override the card order route. Why is that necessary? To save the card after it got deleted from Shopware, which will happen all the time as soon as you hit the finalize order button. So it's just calling the original one and instead of returning, we save it back again with the card persister into the database. Then we have to store the current order ID in the user session in order to make sure if the customer has already an order open or it, he or she doesn't have one. So we create an order place subscriber and there we need the request stack which don't come by default. And if an order ID already is, is stored, we know that the customer already started an order. At that case, we cancel the previous order first and start with a new one. So this is how it might look like. We get the current request, and if there is a session and, the re and if there is no request and no session, we early return. Otherwise, we fetch an open order ID. If there is one, we cancel the old order, just to keep track of what happened. And if there is no open order on, or we cancel the previous one, we just get the new one and store it back into the session. Then we can finally delete the card if the customer is ready and finished and the purchase worked as expected. A good entry point would be the finalized transaction. Of course, it depends on which payment methods you are using. Otherwise, you might use a different one uh, just to make sure it is the final or the, the last step uh, where you can clean up the entire session depends on the payment method. So this might look like this. I just uh, decorated here the original payment controller, added an another method to it, which I just called cleanup session, session storage. And there I get all the data which I need. If there is a finish URL, we know that the purchase finally worked. And then we can set the final URL here which you might need in the front end for redirecting purposes. And if there is a card token stored into the user session, we just reach out to the card persister and delete it as Shopware would do it anyway. And here, because we just worked around it and put it back into the database, we have to make sure we delete it manually so that we don't blow up our card table ourselves. And then we can finally remove the stored card token from the session. So this was how 0815, so we decided to work with it because as I already said, making sure that the customer is satisfied and the entire customer journey 
is a positive experience for the customer will also make sure that your conversion rate will be up. So thanks for your attention. Feel free to ask questions now.